So I'm 28 male, engaged to be married to my high school sweetheart. Due to some financial insecurities we face, we moved back with my parents for a little while until we could afford to rent an apartment. Of course, I've lived with my parents in the past, then moved out with my fiancé for two years. Now we've moved in with my parents for a while until the house we want to rent is available, which will be in two months. For context, I have a married older sister who's on the brink of divorce from her husband because he's doing nothing around the house. He returns from work and sits and plays until he goes to bed, while my sister does all of the housework on top of her full-time nursing job. My mom believes my sister is unreasonable in her demands towards her husband and thinks it's a woman's job to do housework and cater to her husband even if she works a job. Also, when I live with my fiancé alone, she'd always badmouth my fiancé for forcing me to help around the house and always said how, as a woman, she's not taking proper care of me, her soon-to-be husband because I also cooked, cleaned, did chores, etc. Even now that we live in my parents' house when we need to do laundry, etc., I don't expect my fiancé to be the one to do it. I do it myself many times as well. My mom doesn't like that and claims my fiancé has me as a maid. Now, despite all that, my mom demands that I help her around the house when she wants to do housework. And I do. I always do my part since I live there, but for her, it's never enough and I'm a lazy son who doesn't care about helping his mother. After all the ridiculous stuff she said about my fiancé and my sister's traditional roles, I told her, you know what, I'm not helping around. That's a woman's job, remember? So don't demand me to help you with your chores since it's a woman's job and I'm a man. Of course, I keep defending my sister and I keep contributing equally to my fiancé and my chores. I just refuse to contribute helping hands to my mother since she believes she's entitled to help. But my fiancé and sister are supposed to be maids. My mom has badmouthed me to the entire family right now and whenever someone visits, they scold me and call me an idiot, basically for being lazy and not helping out my mom. Am I the idiot for giving my mom a taste of her own medicine? Not the idiot. So she's allowed to help around the house, but your fiancé and sister aren't? Screw that, your mum needs to move into the 21st century. I still think you should help your mum out, but using her words against her in this situation was justified. I get you. She deserved to have her words thrown back at her. However, she doesn't see you as a man. You are a child she raised, and children are expected to do whatever chores assigned to them. That's another aspect of her 1950s mentality. The rules only apply to people who she thinks are men. I think you got it. I was swirling that around in my mind. Her son is her son, so he doesn't count as an actual man. The hypocrisy goes deep with this woman. As people say you should still help, I tell her, I'll help when you admit you were wrong and disrespectful and when you'll say sorry to both women for how you treated them, and to me. Until then, why should you help? She's not just wrong, she's a massive idiot and is abusing everyone. Your mother has seriously ingrained misogyny, and if it were possible, I would say she has a negative number of legs to stand on. At this age, needing this much education? Jesus. This reminds me so much of an encounter with my grandma. She came to visit, went to inspect the kitchen windows, and told me, with my now ex standing right there, that I needed to clean the windows. I handed her the cleaning stuff and told her to have fun. She never mentioned something like this again. I'm damned afraid of heights. I don't clean windows. OP, you're obviously doing it as a laugh at your mom, and if she can't see the apparent hypocrisy, then that's on her. My neighbors are fostering children. Usually they take in either young kids or non-problematic ones, but recently they took in a teen boy. I'll call him Ace. As far as I know, Ace comes from a very troubled background. He has some mental health issues and developmental difficulties, and he's already been to youth prison. In my opinion, his foster parents are very lenient about controlling him, as I've seen him multiple times smoking in their back garden. A year ago, my wife bought a very expensive luxury car that cost about $50,000. We kept it in our driveway as our neighborhood is relatively safe. A few days ago, Ace stole his foster parents' car and crashed it into our car, which ended up getting our car totaled as the damage was too bad. It also destroyed their car. The kid wasn't her only by sheer luck. I decided to press charges against Ace. His foster parents begged me not to do it, saying that he's in counseling and they're working on his issues. They offered to pay for the repairs and to contribute to getting a new car, as luckily they had insurance. In all honesty, I would have appreciated it if they paid me for the damage their lenience caused, but I think it's fair if the young delinquent is punished, so I refused to drop the charges even after they paid me. 
I told them that the kid was already a huge menace and I didn't want a criminal in the making to get away with a serious crime and continue causing harm to others. They told me to give them the money back, it was $10,000, and I said no because they paid me for their own poor control over a troubled teen, basically punishing themselves, and that the state would decide the punishment for Ace. I'm positive that he'll be locked up for a few years, but to be honest, I think he deserves it as he stole a vehicle, Joy rode it, luckily didn't kill or injure anyone, and crashed the vehicle into another, very expensive one. They called me a massive idiot and my wife said I overreacted and that I should have either dropped the charges or given them the money back. Edit, I was up front with them that I wouldn't drop the charges no matter how much they'd pay me. They hoped that I'd change my mind when I got the money and they got mad when I didn't. I don't have any issues with them as they paid for their negligence. The issue is the kid, not the idiot. You have every right to press charges against Ace. His actions were dangerous and resulted in significant damage to your property. It's important for the consequences of his actions to be dealt with appropriately, especially considering his troubled background and previous run-ins with the law. The fact that his foster parents are lenient with him further emphasizes the need for disciplinary action. Stand your ground and let the legal system handle this. Everyone's the idiot here, I guess. On the one hand, you have the law on your side, that's clear. It's also fair and within your right to push charges, and the kid isn't your responsibility. On the other side, being in prison might turn him into a full-blown criminal and eradicate any progress he made so far. I do not think this is for the best. At least don't tell yourself that this is about retribution. You just want to get that kid away from the neighborhood. He doesn't have the law on his side. It's not criminal to accidentally crash into your neighbor's car. It's criminal to steal a car, but it wasn't OP's car that was stolen. It was the foster parents. The kid is a mid-teen, not 18. He's probably had a hard life, not saying that makes it okay, but I'm sure he's going through a lot, and you're adding to that just because you think he's a punk. Your wife is right. Give them the money back or drop the charges. Or don't and stay the idiot. You know, you are indeed the idiot. Dude, you can't accidentally crash an accidentally stolen car. LMAO. The kid made a conscious choice to do all of that. He still caused a crash while committing a crime, negating the whole, it was an accident excuse. Also, a $10,000 payout on a $50,000 car is insufficient. I, 33 female, I'm currently expecting. My husband, 35, and I have been together for over a decade, and I chose to keep my maiden name when we got married several years ago. He's always respected this decision. As far as future children go, I always knew our children having his surname was important to him and I never had an issue with this. So now I'm pregnant and after we found out, I was excited. In my excitement and babbling about the future, I mentioned the idea of a hyphenated name, which I immediately said wouldn't be practical as it would be too much of a mouthful. I reiterated that his last name for the baby was the plan. He balked, disgusted at the idea of hyphenated names and said, kids with hyphenated names get picked on and they're ridiculous. The baby will have my name because that's how it is. Again, I was in support of the baby having his last name, but I was taken aback by this comment and asked, what do you mean that's the way it is? He said that children automatically are given their father's last names at birth, as if it's some automatic legal requirement, like someone comes to the hospital and enforces the father's last name on the birth certificate. Now I'm even more taken aback and questioning what the heck he's talking about. I do not like this. He escalated further about men who have children without their last names being schmucks, etc. I'm fully stunned at this point. He has no explanation for the statement he made about father's names being automatically enforced by nameless, faceless entities on families at hospitals and switched to saying, come on, you know this has always been important to me, which I feel is contradictory to the bizarre claim of legal enforcement. I went from having no issue with giving our child his surname to having an issue with it, as I'm upset with what I perceive to be entitlement. And even though I don't want a hyphenated name, I was still upset about him being so disgusted with the idea of my surname being included. This conversation changed the whole tone of this for me. It went from being something I had no problem doing because I knew it was important to him, to being very turned off by these recently discovered beliefs. I've addressed it twice since this initially occurred, telling him it's very off-putting and upsetting for me. He just blows up and demands to know what last name the baby will have. I know I'm hormonal and not quite myself lately, so I want to know other people's take. Am I the idiot for having such an issue with this? 
Not the idiot. This is a problem of toxic masculinity, not your hormones. It's one thing to decide between the two of you, though honestly the difficulties of hyphenated last names are largely overblown by people who just don't want to hyphenate. It's another thing to be asked to sign off on patriarchal nonsense and it's worth asking what else he's going to insist on because, in his mind, it's just how things are. The fact that he's repeatedly blowing up about it rather than taking a step back to talk calmly about his views and expects you to roll with that is more than cause to be upset. Not going to tell you to leave him, but do keep an eye on this stuff. If he's taking his cues from unexamined gender stereotypes, you may see some parenting behaviour that's potentially problematic, even if you find him a mostly reasonable partner. He's enforcing a gender hierarchy that has no place in today's world. And even worse, he claims, that's how it is, and that's how it works. As if that hierarchy isn't man-made, but natural law, such as the tides coming and going. I'm laughing imagining what this man thinks the birth certificate process is like in the hospital. Like, does he think a nurse reviews it and puts some big red X on it to let the government know to follow up, asking why his last name wasn't used for the child? Yeah, there's a red flag waving wildly there. Now that she's pregnant and just can't leave, not saying he's abusive, but red flags only showing after a woman is trapped is one of the things abusive men do. It's not about the name, but the weird attitude that came out. Your husband has revealed some unsettling true colours. Will he pass those views on to your child? I would be upset if I were you and rethinking the relationship entirely. So, my child is three grades ahead of my sister's kid. I'm going to call the teacher Mrs. Cat. Now, personally, I don't really like her, but I do respect her. She's a very no-nonsense woman and she will ensure you learn. She's had the highest test scores for years. She's unequivocal in her expectations of parents and that she won't put up with our crap. I'm ashamed to admit that I sent her a whole list of questions about her class and she sent back the PDF on her handbook that I already had and told me to read. Every question I had was answered in the first few pages. There are other stories about her, but she is a no-nonsense teacher and doesn't care about the parents' feelings. She taught my daughter extremely well. Now, there is a project where you make a model of some Native American group's home and write a small paper about it. Well, my brother-in-law did that whole project. Mrs. Cat made a quiz about the paper that was written and gave it to his son. Well, his son failed it and admitted he didn't do it. I saw the email that was sent and, in a very professional way, she ripped my brother-in-law a new one. His son got a zero and can redo the project at school. Brother-in-law went in person and, according to him, got ripped a new one. He was complaining and going to take it to the principal and I started laughing. I told him this was hilarious and I hoped he learned his lesson. He's now angry at me. Not the idiot. Some parent complains when he cheats for their son and is caught and his son has to pay the price. Except he can redo it in school. Was your brother-in-law more upset he was caught or that he got a zero? He needs to apologize to the school and have his son with him so his son can see that cheating is not allowed and even an adult must accept punishment and do it with grace. I think he's mad that she ripped him a new one and truly didn't care about his feelings. Or he got mad he was caught. Helping your kid with the project is one thing, but doing the whole thing is way over the line. He's hurting his kid's education and the teacher called him out for it. Good for her. What's he going to say to the principal? I did my son's project, he didn't learn anything he was supposed to do it himself and the teacher was mean to me. That's hilarious. Good for the teacher for allowing the child to redo the project. His father's dishonesty is not his fault. When I, 26 female, was 7, I lost my dad. My mom remarried when I was 9. My stepsister, 29, was 12 at the time. We had very different experiences with the whole blending of the families. I didn't want it to happen and wasn't exactly looking to make them my new dad and sister. They never really became that, but I have accepted that they are family. With my stepsister, her mom chose not to be in her life and she always longed for a family, where she had a mom and maybe some siblings. It made us all living together uncomfortable, with her and me wanting very different things, and her dad and my mom were unhappy with how I felt about us becoming a real family, as they would put it. We're all okay now, not so close, but no hate or animosity there anymore. At least it was hidden well until this. So my stepsister married when she was 20 and had her son then too. She lost her husband two years ago. Her son is now a tween. My stepsister has met a man, a widower, and he has two kids under three. They're trying to get to the point where they move in together, but her son is not really blending with them, which is how she said it. He's not unkind or rude, but he's not making an effort, is how she views it. 
and he said he doesn't want to be part of the new family she wants. They decided to go away for the weekend together and see if that would be a good experience and whether it would help them bond. She said her son ignored when the toddler wanted to hold his hand and then he didn't want to sit with her partner, who was also looking at the stars on their first night there. He also didn't want to take photos with them all. So she decided I needed to talk to him as someone who also lost my dad. She said the adult me could give him more mature insight into everything. I told her I would talk to him, but I wouldn't read from a script. She told me just to be honest. I did talk to her son. I assured him that his feelings were okay and that I had felt the same way. I told him it was okay for his feelings to change, and I told him that mine hadn't really. They just softened so I could like them as people, even if they weren't my dad and sister. He liked hearing that, and he said he did believe that would be how he'd feel, and I assured him it was okay. He was honest about how he just didn't feel the way his mom wanted to, and I related with him with that. My stepsister didn't like that, and a couple of days later she called to curse me out and said I didn't help her like I'd said I would. She told me her son was more sure now that he didn't want to try and be a family with them, and she told me I was so selfish to ruin her life the way I'd ruined my mom's. I told her my concern was with her son and how he was doing. She told me to go screw myself. Am I the idiot? Not the idiot. Honestly, I don't think your stepsister is an idiot either, and I feel for everything she's gone through. Still, in this situation, it sounds like you're giving her some what he needs by validating his feelings honestly. Lying to him wouldn't have served him well. Good job. Your stepsister also didn't lose a parent. Even if her mum chose not to be in her life, she was still alive, which is a trauma of a different colour. Please be there for your nephew and suggest family counselling. They probably want to move quickly so the little kids bond with your sister. And bam, new mom. I also lost my dad. My mom also remarried two years later. It was awful and just compounded the trauma. I disagree. OP has some unresolved issues relating to blending the family and the changes it brought. Also, it doesn't sound like OP gave the son any advice, which seems like the stepsister wanted. Affirming someone's feelings is good and helpful, but is that really helping them through a situation if it comes without offering guidance on how to move forward or delving into why the kid feels like this? You are the idiot. Sure, OP, tell your truth. It is your truth right now. But yeah, you're encouraging a kid in his negative feelings. I think the kid would be better served talking to a family counsellor, one skilled in resolving complex issues like this, rather than someone who is okay with hate or animosity as long as it was well hidden.